This demonstration shows the Cisco ACI integration with the Red Hat Virtualization Manager. Begin by creating a Red Hat VMM domain. Create a VLAN pool that will be used to allocate the VLANs for the networks that will be created on Rev Manager. Create the credentials that are used to log into the Rev Manager by the APIC. Next, create a Red Hat controller. Enter the IP address and data center information and choose the credentials you created. The Red Hat VMN domain has been created and it has a controller named Rev Manager 1. The Cisco APIC is now connected to the Red Hat Virtualization Manager and has pulled the entire inventory as you can see here. Explore 3 hypervisor has one virtual machine, VM1, and Explore 5 has one virtual machine, VM2. The West Coast Data Center has the following network, Overt Management, which was created by default by the Rev Manager. By creating the Rev domain on the Cisco APIC, it pulls the entire inventory and gives visibility to the Cisco APIC admin. In the APIC controller, create a tenant. Under this tenant, create a VRF and a bridge domain. Under this bridge domain, create a subnet. Then create an application profile. Under this application profile, create three application EPGs. Once the application EPGs are created, associate each one with the bridge domain created previously and also associate them with the VMM domain profile. Specify the VMM domain and choose the pre-provision option for resolution immediacy for each of the EPGs. Once the application profile and three EPGs are created in APIC, three networks in the Red Hat Virtualization Manager are created. Associate these three networks to the two hypervisors. Place the virtual machine VM1 in the web EPG. Then place VM2 in the app EPG. The virtual machines are now associated with the two EPGs. By default, these two VMs cannot talk to each other as ACI does not allow any communication between the EPGs without a policy in place between them. We are logged into the virtual machines through a terminal session. VM1 has the IP address of 11111 and VM2 has the IP address of 11122. Because they are placed in two different EPGs, if I try to ping VM2 from VM1, as expected, they are unable to communicate with each other. In the APIC controller, create a contract between the two EPGs. Back in the terminal session, the ping is now working and the two virtual machines are able to communicate. In APIC, the client endpoints on this application EPG show a learned VMM, the path it has learned, and the associated controller and hypervisor. You can see that VM2 is on App EPG. Web EPG shows the endpoint as VM1, the learned VMM, the path, and its controller and hypervisor. In Rev Manager, migrate VM2 from Explore 5 to Explore 3. You can observe the ping while the migration is going on. In Rev Manager, you can see that both the VMs are placed in the Explore 3 hypervisor. In APIC, you can see the endpoints being migrated. The app EPG shows VM2 with the hypervisor of Explore 3 instead of Explore 5. The web EPG shows VM1 with Explore 3. 
both endpoints are on Explore 3. You can also see the same information from VM networking under Red Hat, Controllers, Hypervisors, Explore 3. Both virtual machines are located here. Earlier, VM2 was located under Explore 5. That demonstrates the migration. In the terminal session, the ping is still going on. In APIC, remove the contract and the ping stops. Back in the terminal session, you can see that the ping has stopped. Once the contract is recreated between the two EPGs and APIC, you can see in the terminal session that the ping has resumed. This concludes our demonstration of the Cisco APIC controller integration with the Red Hat Virtualization Manager. This integration provides the APIC admin visibility of virtual compute, network and endpoint inventory, as well as configuration of virtual networking on Rev Manager. For more information, go to our Cisco APIC documentation page.